Stephen Edwin King is an American author of horror, supernatural fiction, suspense, and fantasy novels. His books have sold more than 350 million copies, many of which have been adapted into feature films, miniseries, television series, and comic books. King has published 61 novels and 6 non-fiction books. He has written approximately 200 short stories, most of which have been published in book collections. King has received Bram Stoker Awards, World Fantasy Awards, and British Fantasy Society Awards. In 2003, the National Book Foundation awarded him the Medal for Distinguished Contribution to American Letters. He has also received awards for his contribution to literature for his entire oeuvre, such as the World Fantasy Award for Life Achievement and the Grand Master Award from the Mystery Writers of America. In 2015, King was awarded with a National Medal of Arts from the United States National Endowment for the Arts for his contributions to literature. He has been described as the King of Horror. Stephen King was born September 21, 1947, in Portland, Maine. His father, Donald Edwin King, was a merchant seaman. Donald was born under the surname Pollock, but as an adult, used the surname King. Stephen's mother was Nellie Ruth. The two were married on July 23, 1939, in Scarborough, Maine. Shortly afterwards, they lived with Donald's family in Chicago, then moved to Croton-on-Hudson, New York. The Kings returned to Maine towards the end of World War II, living in a modest house in Scarborough. When King was two years old, his father left the family. King's mother raised Stephen and his older brother, David, by herself, sometimes under great financial strain. The family moved from Scarborough, depending on relatives in Chicago, Croton-on-Hudson, West Deep Air, Wisconsin, Fort Wayne, Indiana, Malden, Massachusetts, and Stratford, Connecticut. When King was 11, his family returned to Durham, Maine, where his mother cared for her parents until their deaths. She then became a caregiver in a local residential facility for the mentally challenged. King was raised Methodist but lost his belief in organized religion while in high school. While no longer religious, King chooses to believe in the existence of God. As a child, King apparently witnessed one of his friends being struck and killed by a train, though he has no memory of the event. His family told him that after leaving home to play with the boy, King returned, speechless and seemingly in shock. Only later did the family learn of the friend's death. Some commentators have suggested that this event may have psychologically inspired some of King's darker works, but King makes no mention of it in his memoir on writing. King related in detail his primary inspiration for writing horror fiction in his non-fiction Dance Macabre, in a chapter titled An Annoying Autobiographical Pause. King compares his uncle's dowsing for water using the bough of an apple branch with the sudden realization of what he wanted to do for a living. That inspiration occurred while browsing through an attic with his elder brother, when King uncovered a paperback version of an H. P. Lovecraft collection of short stories he remembers as the lurker in the shadows, that had belonged to his father. King told Barnes & Noble Studios during a 2009 interview, I knew that I'd found home when I read that book. King attended Durham Elementary School and graduated from Lisbon Falls High School, in Lisbon Falls, Maine in 1966. He displayed an early interest in horror as an avid reader of ex-horror comics, including Tales from the Crypt. He began writing for fun while still in school, contributing articles to Dave's Rag, the newspaper his brother published with a mimeograph machine, and later began selling to his friends stories based on movies he had seen. The first of his stories to be independently published was I Was a Teenage Grave Robber, it was serialized over four issues of a fanzine, Comics Review, in 1965. That story was published the following year in a revised form as in A Half World of Terror in another fanzine, Stories of Suspense, edited by Marv Wolfman. As a teen, King also won a Scholastic Art and Writing Award. From 1966, King studied at the University of Maine, graduating in 1970 with a Bachelor of Arts in English. That year, his daughter Naomi Rachel was born. He wrote a column, Steve King's Garbage Truck, for the student newspaper, 
the main campus, and participated in a writing workshop organized by Burton Hedlund. King held a variety of jobs to pay for his studies, including janitor, gas pump attendant, and worker at an industrial laundry. King met his future wife, fellow student Tabitha Spruce, at the university's Fogler Library after one of Professor Hatland's workshops, they met in 1971. King sold his first professional short story, The Glass Floor, to Startling Mystery Stories in 1967. After graduating from the University of Maine, King earned his certificate to teach high school but, unable to find a teaching post immediately, initially supplemented his laboring wage by selling short stories to men's magazines such as Cavalier. Many of these early stories have been republished in the collection Night Shift. The short story The Raft was published in Adam, a men's magazine. After being arrested for driving over a traffic cone, he was fined $250 and had no money to pay the petty larceny fine. However, payment arrived for the short story The Raft, and King was able to pay the fine. In 1971, King was hired as a teacher at Hampton Academy in Hampton, Maine. He continued to contribute short stories to magazines and worked on ideas for novels. In 1973, King's novel Carrie was accepted by publishing House Doubleday. Carrie was King's fourth novel, but it was the first to be published. It was written on a portable typewriter that belonged to his wife. The novel began as a short story intended for Cavalier magazine, but King tossed the first three pages of his work in the garbage can. Tabitha King fished the pages out of the garbage can and encouraged him to finish the story, saying that she would help him with the female perspective, he followed her advice and expanded it into a novel. King said, I persisted because I was dry and had no better ideas, my considered opinion was that I had written the world's all-time newser. According to The Guardian, Carrie is the story of Carrie Light, a high school student with latent and then, as the novel progresses, developing telekinetic powers. It's brutal in places, affecting in others, and boring in even more. When Carrie was chosen for publication, King's phone was out of service. Doubleday editor William Thompson, who would eventually become King's close friend, sent a telegram to King's house in late March or early April 1973 which read, carry officially a Doubleday book. $2, 500 advance against royalties. Congrats, kid, the future lies ahead, Bill. According to King, he bought a new Ford Pinto with the money from the advance. On May 13, 1973, New American Library bought the paperback rights for $400,000, which, in accordance with King's contract with Doubleday, was split between them. Carey set King's career in motion and became a significant novel in the horror genre. In 1976, it was made into a successful horror film. King's Salem's Lot was published in 1975. In a 1987 issue of the Highway Patrolman magazine, he stated, the story seems sort of down home to me. I have a special cold spot in my heart for it. After his mother's death, King and his family moved to Boulder, Colorado, where King wrote The Shining. The family returned to Western Maine in 1975, where King completed his fourth novel, The Stand. In 1977, the family, with the addition of Owen Philip, traveled briefly to England, returning to Maine that fall where King began teaching creative writing at the University of Maine. In 1982, King published Different Seasons, a collection of four novellas with a more serious dramatic bent than the horror fiction for which King is famous. The collection is notable for having had three of its four novellas turned into Hollywood films, Stand By Me was adapted from the novella The Body, The Shawshank Redemption was adapted from the novella Rita Hayworth in Shawshank Redemption, an apt pupil was adapted from the novella of the same name. In 1985, King wrote his first work for the comic book medium, writing a few pages of the Benefit X-Men comic book Heroes for Hope starring the X-Men. The book, whose profits were donated to assist with famine relief in Africa, was written by a number of different authors in the comic book field, such as Chris Claremont, Stan Lee, and Alan Moore as well as authors not primarily associated with that industry, such as Harlan Ellison. The following year, King published it, 
which was the best-selling hardcover novel in the United States that year, and wrote the introduction to Batman No. 400, an anniversary issue in which he expressed his preference for that character over Superman. In the late 1970s, King began what became a series of interconnected stories about a lone gunslinger, Roland, who pursues the man in black in an alternate reality universe that is a cross between J. R. R. Tolkien's Middle Earth and the American Wild West is depicted by Clint Eastwood and Sergio Leone in their spaghetti westerns. The first of these stories, The Dark Tower, The Gunslinger, was initially published in five installments by the magazine of fantasy and science fiction under the editorship of Edward L. Furman, from 1977 to 1981. The Gunslinger was continued as an eight-book epic series called The Dark Tower, whose books King wrote and published in frequently over four decades. In the late 1970s and early 1980s, King published a handful of short novels Rage, The Long Walk, Rude Work, The Running Man and Thinner under the pseudonym Richard Bachman. The idea behind this was to test whether he could replicate his success again and to allay his fears that his popularity was an accident. An alternate explanation was that publishing standards at the time allowed only a single book a year. He picked up the name from the hard rock band Bachman Turner Overdrive, of which he is a fan. Richard Bachman was exposed as King's pseudonym by a persistent Washington, D.C. bookstore clerk, Steve Brown, who noticed similarities between the works and later located publishers' records at the Library of Congress that named King as the author of one of Bachman's novels. This led to a press release heralding Bachman's death, supposedly from cancer of the pseudonym. King dedicated his 1989 book The Dark Half, about a pseudonym turning on a writer, to the deceased Richard Bachman, and in 1996, when the Stephen King novel Desperation was released, the companion novel The Regulators carried the Bachman byline. In 2006, during a press conference in London, King declared that he had discovered another Bachman novel, titled Blaze. It was published on June 12, 2007. In fact, the original manuscript had been held at King's alma mater, the University of Maine in Orono, for many years and had been covered by numerous King experts. King rewrote the original 1973 manuscript for its publication. King has used other pseudonyms. The short story The Fifth Quarter was published under the pseudonym John Swithin, by Cavalier in April 1972. The story was reprinted in King's collection Nightmares and Dreamscapes in 1993 under his own name. In the introduction to the Bachman novel Blaze, King claims, with tongue-in-cheek, that Bachman was the person using the Swithin pseudonym. The children's book Charlie the Choo Choo, from the World of the Dark Tower was published in 2016 under the pseudonym Beryl Evans, who was portrayed by actress Alison Davies during a book signing at San Diego Comic-Con, and illustrated by Ned Dameron. It is adapted from a fictional book central to the plot of King's previous novel The Dark Tower 3, The Wastelands. In 2000, King published online a serialized horror novel, The Plant. At first the public presumed that King had abandoned the project because sales were unsuccessful, but King later stated that he had simply run out of stories. The unfinished epistolary novel is still available from King's official site, now free. Also in 2000, he wrote a digital novella, Writing the Bullet, and has said he sees ebooks becoming 50% of the market probably by 2013 and maybe by 2012. But he also warns, here's the thing, people tire of the new toys quickly. King wrote the first draft of the 2001 novel Dream Pitcher with a notebook and a Waterman fountain pen, which he called the world's finest word processor. In August 2003, King began writing a column on pop culture appearing in Entertainment Weekly, usually every third week. The column was called The Pop of King. In 2006, King published an apocalyptic novel, Cell. The book features a sudden force in which every cell phone user turns into a mindless killer. King noted in the book's introduction that he does not use cell phones. In 2008, King published both a novel, Dumaki, and a collection, just after sunset. The latter featured 13 short stories, 
including a previously unpublished novella, N. Starting July 28, 2008, N. Was released as a serialized animated series to lead up to the release of Just After Sunset. In 2009, King published Door, a novella written exclusively for the launch of the second-generation Amazon Kindle and available only on Amazon.com and Throttled, a novella co-written with his son Joe Hill and released later as an audiobook titled Road Rage, which included Richard Matheson's short story Duel. King's novel Under the Dome was published on November 10th of that year, it is a reworking of an unfinished novel he tried writing twice in the late 1970s and early 1980s. And at 1,074 pages, it is the largest novel he has written since it. Under the Dome debuted at No. 1 in the New York Times bestseller list. On February 16, 2010, King announced on his website that his next book would be a collection of four previously unpublished novellas called Full Dark, No Stars. In April of that year, King published Black Hay Billy an original novella issued first by independent small press cemetery dance publications and later released in mass-market paperback by Simon & Schuster. The following month, DC Comics premiered American Vampire, a monthly comic book series written by King with short story writer Scott Snyder, and illustrated by Raphael Albuquerque, which represents King's first original comics work. King wrote the background history of the very first American Vampire, Skinner Suite, in the first five-issue story arc. Scott Snyder wrote the story of Pearl. King's next novel, November 22, 63, was published November 8, 2011, and was nominated for the 2012 World Fantasy Award Best Novel. The Eighth Dark Tower volume, The Wind Through the Keyhole, was published in 2012. King's next book was Joyland, a novel about an amusement park serial killer. According to an article in the Sunday Times, published on April 8, 2012. During his Chancellor's Speaker Series talk at University of Massachusetts Lowell on December 7, 2012, King indicated that he was writing a crime novel about a retired policeman being taunted by a murderer. With a working title MR. Mercedes and inspired by a true event about a woman driving her car into a McDonald's restaurant, it was originally meant to be a short story just a few pages long. In an interview with Parade, published May 26, 2013, King confirmed that the novel was more or less completed he published it in June 2013. Later, on June 20, 2013, while doing a video chat with fans as part of promoting the upcoming Under the Dome TV series, King mentioned he was halfway through writing his next novel, Revival, which was released November 11, 2014, King announced in June 2014 that Mr. Mercedes is part of a trilogy. The second book, Finders Keepers, was released on June 2, 2015. On April 22, 2015, it was revealed that King was working on the third book of the trilogy, End of Watch, which was ultimately released on June 7, 2016. During a tour to promote End of Watch, King revealed that he had collaborated on a novel, set in a women's prison in West Virginia, with his son, Owen King to be titled Sleeping Beauties. King has written two novels with horror novelist Peter Stroud, The Talisman and a sequel, Black House. King has indicated that he and Stroud will likely write the third and concluding book in the series, The Tale of Jack Sawyer, but has set no deadline for its completion. King produced an artist's book with designer Barbara Kruger, My Pretty Bunny, published in a limited edition of 250 by the Library Fellows of the Whitney Museum of American Art. Alfred A. Knopf released it in a general trade edition. The Diary of Ellen Ringbauer, My Life at Rose Red was a paperback tying for the King penned miniseries Rose Red. Published under anonymous authorship, the book was written by Ridley Pearson. The novel is written in the form of a diary by Ellen Ringbauer, and annotated by the fictional professor of paranormal activity, Joyce Reardon. The novel also presents a fictional afterword by Ellen Ringbauer's grandson, Stephen. Intended to be a promotional item rather than a standalone work, 
its popularity spawned a 2003 prequel television miniseries to Rose Red, titled The Diary of Ellen Rainbar. This spin-off is a rare occasion of another author being granted permission to write commercial work using characters and story elements invented by King. The novel tie idea was repeated on Stephen King's next project, the miniseries Kingdom Hospital. Richard Dooling, King's collaborator on Kingdom Hospital and writer of several episodes in the miniseries, published a fictional diary, The Journals of Eleanor Drews, in 2004. Eleanor Drews is a key character in Kingdom Hospital, much as Dr. Joyce Reedon and Ellen Rimbauer are key characters in Rose Red. Throttle, a novella written in collaboration with his son Joe Hill, appears in the anthology He is Legend, celebrating Richard Matheson. Their second novella collaboration, In the Tall Grass, was published in two parts in Esquire. It was later released in ebook and audiobook formats, the latter read by Stephen Lang. King and his son Owen King wrote the novel Sleeping Beauties, released in 2017, that is set in a women's prison. In 1988, the band Blue Oyster Cult recorded an updated version of its 1974 song Astronomy. The single released for radio play featured a narrative intro spoken by King. The Blue Oyster Cult song The Reaper was also used in the King TV series The Stand. Thank you for watching. Please, subscribe.